know what the problem with this neck is? Ain't got no fret slots in it. Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. We're in the wood shop today. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys how we put fret slots in a neck that has an unslotted fretboard already glued to it. In fact, I've got four of these guys. We're going to, uh, we're gonna slot them up and get them ready for binding and inlay and, and uh, radiusing, etc., etc. So there are probably a couple of you guys who are out there watching who are going, I already know how you did it, Matt. And, um, and uh, because people have told me in the past, hey, you should, uh, you should just slot them after the, the fretboards are glued on. And um, uh, so for those of you guys watching, thank you for the idea. Uh, we figured out how to, how to do it and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it too. Anyway, anyway. Um, so uh, if you've been watching for any amount of time, you've probably seen some videos where I put slots in uh, fretboards that are thicknessed and ready for, for gluing. Uh, did it on the trusty, uh, the, the trusty radial arm saw. We're gonna use that exact same tool for doing this. Um, you probably remember a video where I showed you how to use specially designed tone pins um, uh, to, to index said, uh, said fretboards to, to the next. And um, yeah, so, so uh, we don't do it that way anymore. And I thought uh, uh, it's high time that I showed you guys how we do uh, use the, the setup that we use. And my buddy Gary Taft actually asked me if I would do that for you. So Gary, this one's for you. Um, so I think the, the thing that we want to talk about is a couple of tools that we have uh, gotten um, since we did those old videos, and I'm going to show you those now. So one of the tools that was a game changer for us were the uh, template sets that we get. I, these are, they're clear, so you can't see them. The template sets that we get from Steve over at Maximum Guitar Works. Link in the description below. Uh, Steve is a good friend of ours and is making some really excellent stuff that uh, we use daily and you guys can use it too. Um, so anyway, this is, but this is what I wanted to show you. This is one of his neck templates. Actually, this is one of my neck templates. See, it's got my headstock on it there. Let me put it on my, let me get it on my shirt so you can see it. This has my headstock and it even says, um, it says TT prostitute on it because this is a, this is a neck template for a, um, one of our prostitute models. Anyhow, you see these two holes here and you see these two holes here. These are, um, they're holes in the, uh, in the acrylic and they're backed with uh, uh, hardened pins. Uh, they're drill guides. And the idea is, uh, when, when Steve was, was coming up with these, he thought that what you would do is you would take your fretboard and drill little holes in the fretboard and then you'd take your neck and you'd drill little holes in the neck and then you'd have some index pins that hold it all together so you didn't have to drill through the fret and use special index, special tone pins to, to, to do all that stuff. Well, we didn't read the directions. So what we did is we started drilling the holes on the back of the neck, see, like that. And, um, and then we made a jig for our radial arm saw that this indexes on and cuts the, and you can pull the, pull the fret slotting saw back and forth and, and cut them that way. So it kind of makes life a little easier. One, um, we get the necks done, we get the headstock angles done, we get the tuner holes done, we get the truss rod put in, and, um, and then we just slap the board on there. And if it wiggles a little bit, we don't care as long as there's enough board to to cover the uh, um, to cover the, the neck itself. Um, you don't you want the grain to be right, okay? So you don't want to just shimmy shimmy shake all over the place. But there's not as much um, uh, uh, you, there's not as much emphasis as making sure that the board doesn't move even a tiny fraction. It can move quite a bit and still be okay. Okay, so that. One makes life a whole lot easier. Uh, so after we uh, glue the fretboards on, we, we trim them off and then run these over a uh, uh, just a flush trim bit uh, on the, the, the table router, and we get them to look like this. As you can see, they are uh, they are the same as the neck, looking good. Okay, so now it's time to um, to start fret slotting. But there's one other cool thing that we can do before we put slots in them. And that is, 
We can route for binding, okay? Um, now, you guys might be going, well, why in the hell would you wanna do that? Um, well, there's a lot of reasons. One is um, you eliminate any place where you can get little chips. This is the hand motion for little chips. Little chips that come out. Um, you have 22 fret slots. You have 22, actually you have 44 possible places where you can get a chip out because um, you know the wood has little tiny 23,000 slots in it. So we like to uh, cut for binding first. And, um, and this is just a preliminary pass. I'm actually gonna do all my necks. Uh, I'm gonna route for all my necks for binding. We're gonna go down a quarter of an inch and, um, and then, we'll, then we'll do fret slots. And it, it's, it's, I don't know, it, um, I'm not sure it completely eliminates uh, any, any little, little tear out, but, uh, but anything you can do to eliminate some tear out is a good thing in my book. Okay, so I've got my, um, my, uh, my binding uh, slot cutter uh, that I got from Stu Mac in my um, in my pin router. You could do it on the uh, table router too, or you could even do it with a hand router. But you guys know me; I'm going to use the pin router. So it's all jigged up and ready to go. Let's show you how it works. Okay, gang. Uh, I got home and I was attempting to edit the video, and I realized that there was no video for this part. So um, please forgive the lack of continuity. Um, <laughs> but what I wanted to show you guys was how this Stu Mac. Um, binding cutter works and how it works on my uh, my pin router like i was saying in the other stuff i i think um you can do this on uh, uh with a hand router you can do it on a table router but since i got a pin router i'm going to use the pin router i'm going to make a couple passes and uh, it's gonna uh, this bearing here is going to ride on the neck and this cutter is going to cut a rabbit into the fretboard and it's going to do our binding slot and i don't know how much of this i already did but let me just for the sake of of um uh, of completion tell you that the reason that we are putting the binding slot in before the fret slots is because it eliminates some of the uh, opportunities for tear out every time there's a fret slot. So you imagine there's 22 fret slots and there's 44 places where a tear out can occur. Uh, it doesn't eliminate the, uh, the possibility of tear out but it reduces it some. Alright, I'm going to do it in two passes and I'm going to go down to a quarter inch. I think I need a new brake pad on my, uh, my stop here. Okay, so I've got my binding channel in. Now, um, the binding cutter that I was using has a, uh, a, the bearing can be switched out just like any other rabbiting cutter. This one will do a 60 thousandths um, binding channel. You can put different size bearings on there and do other sizes of, um, of binding widths. Or thicknesses and uh, um, and so yeah so you get the you get the cutter and you swap out the bearing and that changes the um, uh, the thickness of the binding that you can use so anyway gang this is the last time we're gonna be using this neck because I've got all those other ebony necks that you'll see throughout the video but uh, again I wanted to show you and uh, came out here special for you guys so that you could see the pin router and the Stumac binding cutter in action cool all right on with the show all right, gang, uh, we got our binding slots done, so that's cool. And uh, now I'm gonna show you how we make a neck like this look like this. And then we'll do some more stuff after that. Um, the key is, again, like I was saying, these little holes here, they line up with all the necks have the, uh, the same holes. 
And uh, the reason they have holes is because they are going to accept some eighth inch pins and they line up with uh, this uh, fret slotting guide that I got from Stuart McDonald. I modified this one to have the holes. This, the, the back ones have uh, two sets of holes. Don't worry about that. The, for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna use the two in the middle and two here. Um, and, um, and we'll put a little double stick tape on it and it's gonna go right over our radial arm saw and uh, you'll see what I mean, it's super, super easy. So let's get everything set up and we'll go from there. Um, the important thing to remember is that these, these holes are in the same spot on every neck that we make and that's the key. Okay, gang, I'm going to show you how to uh, index the, um, uh, the template onto our necks. And for, to do that, we're going to be using some eighth inch dowel pin. And um, uh, we're going to be putting the pins in there and running it through the, the template. I do want to put some double stick tape on the ends. So we'll do that first. Actually, we might do that second. You know what? Let's try it both ways. I think I want to get my index pins in first. So um, you can put these in and then slide the template over it and cut them down, or you can do what I'm gonna do, and that is push them through the template and cut them off that way. I know my hand's in the way. All right, let's get a different angle. All right, so again, I'm not left-handed. So I'm just gonna tap the pin in through the fret slotting template into my neck. And then I'm gonna come down here and uh, get everything lined up and repeat. Okay, pins are in place. We could probably just go ahead and run this through the, uh, the saw, but I wanna put, like I said, I wanna put a little tape on each end and uh, that's just gonna kinda help keep uh, everything from wiggling and jiggling, okay? So we'll put a hunk of tape right here. put a hunk of tape right here. This is that Taylor Toolworks um, double stick tape that we've been using for a long time. We really like this stuff. All right, and then we just put the, put the template back. Okay, there's only one way it can go. <laughs> Squeeze that dude on there. And let's change the camera angle one more time. Okay, so our our neck is now ready to go. These, uh, these holes in the template, right here, indexing templates, index off of this pin right here. And uh, you can actually feel it lock into place. And once it has, you drag the saw across it and, um, and it's perfect every time. Let's change the angle one more time. Okay, the first cut that we're gonna make is we're gonna cut the nut. And as you can see, we need to come down a little ways um, because we want to go all the way through on this one. So uh, we're going to get our, our, uh, our template rides on our, on our fence here, okay? We're going to come over to that first guy there. Not quite low enough. Getting closer. You can actually see the, the slot going into the ebony on the, uh, the uh, uh, binding channel. I'm really close now.
Okay, we're gonna call that good. Um, we, we can clean the rest of that up with a hand tool later. Okay, so now we're gonna do all the other fret slots. And uh, again, we're gonna need to raise the blade for that. Uh, let's do the first one here. Doesn't quite look deep enough. That looks pretty good. Come down one more. All right, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and uh, cut the other 21 fret slots. I'm gonna turn my vacuum on and we'll go to town. Okay, gang, you can dig that. All of our fret slots are, are good to go. And uh, our Stumac um, uh, fret slotting blade worked great with our Stumac fret slotting template. Link in the video for those guys if you want to buy one. You don't have to have a radial arm saw to do this. Um, you can do this on a table saw. You have to have uh, you know something that this blade will fit on if you want to use this blade. Uh, people often ask me, could you do it with a power miter box? I'm not going to say no, but I'm not going to say yes, because I haven't figured out how to do that myself because I have this tool. I, I mean, I have a power miter box, but uh, this one already works. So I haven't really, you know, deep dove into how to do it with a tool that I don't need to use. All right, so all of our necks are now slotted. And uh, I wanna take a moment, guys, to um, <clears throat> safety talk. The radial arm saw and really any power tool will cut you quickly if you let it. Um, but it is an inanimate object. Um, I do not advise you to um, remove any safety um, uh, uh, shields or, or any of that sort of thing. I, I also advise you to remove any, you know, jewelry or something that like that that can get caught in the mechanism. Um, so that's kind of a do as I say, not as I do. Um, yeah, uh, but um, uh, the, the most important safety in any tool shop is between your ears. So do not think for a second that if you have a bunch of safety protocol in place, that you don't have to think about stuff, okay? Um, protect your lungs, protect your eyes, protect your ears, protect your hands, protect your fingers, keep all the safety crap on your tools. I got it, you got it, let's move on. All right, the last thing that we have to do before we are able to hand this neck off to Chris for inlay, should it need it, 
is we need to get rid of this chunk here uh, because this uh, this slot is the uh, is the nut slot and so all of this material needs to go away and let's see if I can get this onto the camera maybe I can get it in one shot nope All right, there we go. So if we need to clean this up any, we can. We actually put a piece of tape on here before we uh, glue everything down so we don't mash a bunch of glue here. But this will now become the nice uh, shelf for our nuts. Boop, it just goes right in there. But uh, that is a different video. All right, gang, well, let's go ahead and wrap this video up because I need to deliver these next to Chris so he can do his work his inlay magic on the on the fretboards. You might have noticed that every single neck that we were working with today has an ebony fretboard. They are all the other ones over there. Um, so yeah, people are uh, still into ebony. Ebony is getting harder and harder to get. But um, uh, yeah, so ebony's still cool. And uh, if you like black fretboards. I mean, that's, that's the hot setup right there. <clears throat> Plus, I think ebony is a super cool wood. Even if you get stuff that has streaks in it or, or is actually brown. Um, in fact, some people think that's even cooler. So anyway, ebony, super cool. Um, guys, if you uh, want to try some of the techniques that I was showing off today, uh, I urge you to check out one of our build a classic uh, or classic woodworking workshops. We have either a set neck, you can do a set neck, a bolt on, neck through, carve top. There's a whole bunch of, of workshops that we offer. Um, and uh, you will get to do some of the exact same stuff that I was doing in this video today. Um, so if that's something that you wanna do, check that out on our website. If you uh, wanna know more about some of the tools that I use, link in the description below to Stuart McDonald and uh, um, you can check those out there. Uh, but other than that, gang, if you like the video, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do so. If you appreciate content like this, I would urge you to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you cool stuff like this. Or if you want to, you can join us on, uh, on YouTube. Same deal, uh, even a buck a month. You know, actually, I've got some uh, acoustic videos that are playing exclusively on uh, uh, member YouTube member and a Patreon member, same video, just different different platforms. And uh, it seems like the YouTube uh, members are watching more than the Patreon members, for whatever reason. So maybe it's easier to just hit the subscribe button <clears throat> on the YouTube. All right, gang. Well, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Just like always, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Uh, and until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, start your own YouTube channel. That's what I did. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. I